Hi, and welcome to Clear Studies. I am your host, Bishop A. Reginald Littman. Be sure to subscribe so that you won't miss new episodes as they are loaded. I am so delighted to welcome you here. Stay tuned. I'll be right back after this. I believe with everything within me that every believer wants to grow in their study of God's word. There's so many obstacles, however, that can present themselves that keep us from really studying like we should. There are time factors. And then sometimes there is just the lack of simplicity when it comes to reading or even being taught the Word of God. That's why I created a platform called Clear Studies. What is Clear Studies? Clear Studies is a platform where you are a part of an e-class and each week I send you a link to a 15-minute podcast and a 15-minute video. That way, whether you're an auditory or visual learner, you're covered on both ends. The podcast is something that you can download to your device and listen to it when you get ready, when you have time to do so. It may be midnight, it may be three in the morning, it may be during your lunch break. But to accompany the teaching, each week you also will get a colorful PDF handout that is virtually a transcript of the teaching. So you won't miss a single word that I have said in the video or in the podcast. But beyond that, it comes with discussion questions that are simple yet provocative that will enable you to think your way through that passage and apply it to your everyday life. It's something that you can share with your family, with your friends. You can even create your own discussion group about each week's lesson. I want you to be a part of my e-class. I want you to grow in the study of God's Word. I don't want you to miss out on what God is doing and on this divine opportunity to grow, to study, and to learn with others. There will never be an embarrassing moment where you're asking a question in front of the group or where you put on the spot. It's just like it's just me talking to you and then God talking to you while you're studying on your own. If there's ever a question, you can always email me. Why don't you join right now? Clearstudies at gmail.com. Just send an email and say, sign me up, and we will add you to the E-class. And you can join scores of other people around the nation who are being blessed by these brief but impactful teachings. Be sure to check out my brand new podcast called clear studies. You'll find the link in the description. You can hear it on Spotify and wherever podcasts are heard. This week, we're going to be focusing on part one of surviving shattered dreams, surviving shattered dreams. And we're going to be looking at Genesis 37, verse number 12 and following. Have you ever experienced the heartbreak of a shattered dream? Everything was set you were sure that things were set out to go a certain way and then boom the bottom drops out of everything maybe it was a child that did not turn out the way that you anticipated or maybe it was a financial setback that broke your heart maybe it was a marriage that did not go as you had hoped and dreamed that it would life it often seems is a series of shattered dreams when our dreams are shattered, it often leaves us wondering, devastated, confused, and upset. And sometimes we might even wonder or be tempted to think that God has forgotten about us and about our dreams. We might even at some point in our journey feel as if God has literally forgotten about the things that he promised us in his own word. I wonder how Joseph felt as the events of his life began to unfold in this particular passage. I wonder if he questioned the dreams that God had given to him. I wonder if he began to wonder about what God has shown him in Genesis 37 verse 5 through 10. Surely when his brothers ripped his coat off of him, surely when they threw him in the pit, certainly when they ignored, they ignored his pleas to get him up out of the pit, Joseph had to have felt like his dreams had been shattered 
when they sent him off into slavery into Egypt with total strangers, not even caring what would happen to him. I want to take a look at these verses and see what it is that they teach us concerning dealing with life when our dreams have been shattered. They teach us that our dreams can be put to the test. They definitely teach us that life doesn't always go like we think it will, like we plan. Even the best of plans can fail. These verses have a lot to say to us today. But besides speaking to us about our dreams, they also speak to us about the harsh reality and nature of sin. When sin is allowed to reign in our hearts and lives. But in the end, these verses also remind us that even when our dreams end up in shattered pieces, God is still in control. And if God gave the dream to begin with, God is definitely able, more than able and more than capable to guarantee that it will become a reality. That's something you can hold on to for this week. I'll begin at Genesis 37, verse number 12. And it reads like this in the Living Bible Translation. One day, Joseph's brothers took their father's flock to Shechem to graze them there. A few days later, Israel called for Joseph and told him, your brothers are over in Shechem grazing the flocks. Go and see how they are getting along and how it is with the flocks and bring me word. Very good, Joseph replied. So he traveled to Shechem from his home at Hebron Valley. A man noticed him wandering in the fields. Who are you looking for? He asked. For my brothers and their flocks, Joseph replied. Have you seen them? Yes, the man told him. They are no longer here. I heard your brothers say they were going to Dothan. So Joseph followed them to Dothan and found them there. Now, in verse number 12 through 14, the first thing that we see is Jacob's demand. Jacob's demand. His command was this. Jacob wanted Joseph to go and check on the welfare of his brothers. They are off away from the family, tending to their father's sheep. And there are a couple of reasons, I believe, why Jacob was concerned about his sons. Number one, they were in Shechem. It was here in Shechem that Simeon and Levi had murdered an entire village to avenge the rape of their sister Dinah in Genesis 34, 1 through 31. Surely there was anger in that region and Jacob feared for their safety. Number two, his sons had proven that they were not trustworthy. Joseph had already had to bring his father an evil report regarding some of his brothers while they were on shepherd duty. Jacob was probably wondering what evil they were up to now. And Jacob sends Joseph because he can be trusted to do the right thing and tell his father the truth. B, his confusion. Now, either Jacob was out of touch with his family or he underestimated the extent of the problems in his own home. He may have known what was happening, but believed that the other boys were not capable of harming Joseph. As we will see, not only were they capable of harming him, they were capable of murdering him. And if there's a lesson for us here, it is that parents should pay close attention to what is happening in the lives of their children. You need to know who their friends are. The Bible is clear. The wrong kind of friends can ruin a life and destroy a testimony. We're told that in 1 Corinthians 15 and 33. You need to know how they are spending their time, how they're spending their money. You need to know what is happening in their lives. You need to know what they are looking at on the internet. You need to know what they're texting on their phones. You have the right to know. Now, children will demand their privacy, but as long as they're living under your roof, their business is your business. Passive parents will pay a high price for allowing them to do as they please. Secondly, we see Joseph's devotion. Now, in verse 13, it was immediate. It was immediate. 
Without question, Joseph accepts his father's assignment and leaves to go find his brothers. He knows the risk, but his obedience to his father's command is his first priority. And in this regard, Joseph is a type of Jesus. When Jesus came into the world, he was sent by the father, but he came willingly. Jesus didn't have to be forced into this world. He became sin for man, and it was his will to do just that. He wanted to please the Father. Whenever God speaks as our Heavenly Father, we should listen. And nothing demonstrates this that more than the example of Joseph and Jesus. Now, in verse number 15 through 17, it was insistent, insistent. When Joseph arrived in Shechem, he did not find his brothers there. A man tells him that they have left Shechem and have gone to Dothan. Many would have turned around and gone home, but not Joseph. His father wanted to know the welfare of his sons and wanted word brought back to him. So Joseph wanted to carry out the will of his father, even if it meant going beyond the original command. And again, Joseph is a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus came into this world to seek and to save the lost sheep of Israel. He pursued them with a steadfast love, but they rejected him out of hand. He continued to pursue them, eventually dying on a cross to open the way of salvation for all who would come to him by faith. Jesus was not deterred by man's rejection and hatred. He loved sinners and died to set them free. What a great example we have today in this lesson between the life of Joseph and how he was a foreshadow of Jesus in obeying his father. Even with shattered dreams, God still wants us to obey him. I hope you got something out of this lesson. Be sure to sign up for our e-class, clearstudies at gmail.com. I look forward to sharing with you next week. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification. Leave a comment. Until then, obey the father even when your dreams are shattered. This is Bishop Lipman with Clear Studies. Peace.